Well, my responsibility today is to share with you uh, about the fear of the Lord versus the folly of man as found in the book of Proverbs. And I'd like to begin by asking you to turn to Colossians, which is, of course, the logical place to turn, isn't it, if we're going to be studying uh, the fear of the Lord in the book of Proverbs. But I think you'll see the connection in a moment. Uh, Colossians chapter 2, I want to read the first three verses. It says, For I would that you knew what great conflict I have for you, and for them at Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be comforted, be knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And it's that last uh, phrase, really, that is on my mind as I consider this topic, that in God, the Father, and Christ are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And that takes us back to the book of Proverbs, because we understand that the book of Proverbs is a book of wisdom. And yet, we just read that, that really all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are found in the Father and in Christ. And so we want to keep that at the back of our minds as we consider the book of Proverbs, this book of wisdom, together. And really stress that, in a sense, if you really want wisdom, you really have to start with Christ, who will lead you to the Father, and they are the source of genuine wisdom. So as we consider uh, the book of Proverbs, I'd like you to turn there now, and uh, the topic before us is the fear of God. Of course, the fear of God, as we're going to see in our study, is seen as really the, the principal thing in obtaining wisdom and knowledge. Uh, for instance, Proverbs 1, 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And again, we would say further on in chapter, I believe it's chapter 9, Proverbs 9 and verse 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. And so we can see really that understanding the fear of the Lord is really the key or the gateway to gaining true wisdom and true knowledge because uh, the fear of the Lord is going to lead us into a right relationship with the triune God. In fact, uh, we could say this, that um, the fear of the Lord, uh, without it, nobody would ever really seek to be right with God if they didn't have a genuine fear of God and would never really be driven to see their need of a saviour, which will then open up to them this great treasure house of wisdom and knowledge. So what is this fear of the Lord that we're talking about? What actually is it? And we want to say straight away that it's not this kind of uh, fear of somebody who's abusive, like a, an abusive parent or something like that. It's not cowering in fear at somebody that is abusive because God is anything but that. He is a loving, gracious God, and yet nevertheless a, a thrice holy God, and we want to acknowledge that. Uh, it's not fear of calamity or death that's in view here in the fear of the Lord, or of losing privileges or being displeasing in some way. When one fears God or fears the Lord, what does that really mean? It means that he truly reverences God it stands in awe of, of him, recognize, recognizing God's greatness, who he is. He's the great creator. He's the sustainer. It's, it's this idea of understanding who he is, uh, uh, this great person, that who we have to do, who we have to do business with. And so it's standing in awe of the Almighty. Uh, also, uh, somebody that fears the Lord will have a genuine desire and a willingness to submit to whatever he asks us to do because somebody who fears the Lord will recognize not only his greatness 
but will recognize his authority. And when we walk in the fear of the Lord, it's almost like we're keeping him in mind in every moment of our lives. We're walking with this consciousness that this God of whom I have to do, I've got, I've got to do business with him. Uh, he's my creator. Uh, he's the one that sustains me. And he is the one that ultimately I have to answer to uh, as uh, his creature. And so being aware of his greatness, being aware of his authority, keeping him in my mind as I go about the affairs of life, that is what it means to really walk in the fear of the Lord. And so as we look at the book of Proverbs together, we look at several references that are found in this book to the fear of the Lord. And we said the first one, and it's only seven verses in, chapter one, verse seven. And so as this uh, writer uh, writes, because uh, it's Solomon, uh, writes about wisdom and uh, his whole purpose, he tells us in verse two, is to know wisdom and instruction, uh, to perceive the words of understanding. It was if you really want to be wise, uh, if you really want to uh, understand true wisdom, he says the starting point is having a right view of God. The fear of the Lord, verse 7, is the beginning of knowledge. And then he says, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. And it's amazing to think about these, these ideas. First of all, the fear of the Lord is the beginning that word beginning, it literally uh, means the principal thing. The fear of the Lord is the principal thing. If you really want to have true knowledge and true wisdom, the principal thing is to start with the fear of the Lord. Because again, God, as we already mentioned, he is the all-knowing God and he is the all-wise God. And so we'll never have true knowledge or true wisdom if we ignore him or if we uh, don't take him seriously, he's really the starting point. And for those that reject him, uh, reject his revelation of himself, reject him as creator, as revealed in creation, uh, as the, we reject him in, in the ministry of, in our conscience, and then, of course, reject him in scripture and in the Savior, then the Bible says that that person that does that is a fool and really will never truly have uh, proper knowledge and will never truly have proper wisdom. And I'm reminded in Romans chapter 1 uh, where we read in verse 22 uh, based on generation basically that, that doesn't want God, doesn't want to walk in the fear of God. In fact it says in verse 21 because that they, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. So they really didn't walk in the fear of the Lord. They didn't give him the glory that he's worthy of. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations. Their foolish heart was darkened. And then it makes this statement, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And the Bible is very, very clear in describing what a fool is. A fool is somebody who doesn't bring God into the equations of life. Uh, he rejects God. He re rejects the revelation of God. The fool has said in his heart, uh, Psalm 14, 1, no God, no God for me. Yeah, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And the tragedy is, and we've got to be honest about this, that our educational system today has really re removed all hope of true knowledge and true wisdom because it has basically, for the most part, rejected God. And what is it doing? It's producing fools. And sometimes you listen to some of the statements that are made by so-called university professors, supposedly uh, highly intelligent people, and you think to yourself, these people are crazy. What, how would they ever come up with something so ridiculous as this? But it's because they have rejected the fear of the Lord, which is really the basis of true knowledge and true wisdom. I want to quote from Martin Luther on education here for a moment. And this is what he says. I am much afraid that the schools 
will prove to be the very gates of hell. Unless they diligently labor in explaining the Holy Scriptures. I want to just say that. He says explaining the Scriptures, not explaining the Scriptures away. Uh, since German higher criticism came in in the 1800s, uh, educational institutions have done their very best to not explain the Scriptures, but explain them away. And as a result of that, uh, they have shaped a generation. And so he says, they diligently labor and explain the Holy Scriptures and engraving them in the hearts of the youth. And what they, today, education has undermined the hearts of the youth. I advise, he says, no one to place his child where the Scriptures do not reign paramount. Every institution in which means are not unceasingly occupied with the Word of God must be corrupt, must be corrupt. And of course, we know that that is exactly what's happened in our society. Why is our society the way it is? Because we have rejected the fear of God. We have turned our back on true knowledge and true wisdom. And look at Proverbs chapter 1 again and verse 29. It says, For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would not of my counsel, they despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way, be filled with their own devices, so on and so forth. And we can just see in our society, because people hated true knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, well, we're reaping a harvest, the harvest of chaos that we see in our country today is really a result of man choosing not the fear of the Lord. And it's tell us a matter of choice. Choosing to fear the Lord, to give him his rightful place, to acknowledge his greatness, to acknowledge his awesomeness uh, because of who he is. And so when fools despise wisdom, they must face the results of their choice. Their hatred for wisdom arises out of a refusal to fear God. Proverbs chapter 2. <clears throat> it tells us that this should be something that's a matter of diligent search. Verse 4, if thou seekest her as silver, searches for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Remember where those treasures of wisdom and knowledge were found? They were found in God. And in the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. That's where they're to be found, in the person of Christ and in the Father. And then chapter 3, verse 7, as we're just going to quickly make our journey through looking at this topic. Be not wise in thine own eyes, fear the Lord, and depart from evil. Again, good, good advice. First of all, don't be wise in your own eyes. You're not smarter than your creator. You do not know better than he knows. And so don't be wise in your own eyes. Why do you wise in your own conceits? But instead, fear the Lord and reverence him, reverence his word, reverence the revelation of him that he has given to you. And at the same time, depart from evil because there's no possibility of being in a right relationship with God if we harbor evil in our lives. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the psalmist would say, the Lord will not hear me. And so a genuine fear of the Lord causes a person to depart from evil and to, to, to turn our backs on sinful practices. But fearing Jehovah will cause one to want to cease from sin, to live a holy life uh, so that we can enjoy intimacy with God and true wisdom. And so it, uh, the fear of the Lord and depart from evil. Chapter 8 now, please. Proverbs chapter 8. Great chapter in which wisdom is personified, uh, as uh, of course revealed to be the eternal son, the one that was daily uh, the delight of the father. And again, in this very passage, it says in verse 13, 
The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate. And so again, the true fear of the Lord would be to, to love what he loves and to hate what he hates. He hates evil and pride and arrogance, the evil way. And so a person who fears the Lord gives him the proper place of respect and reverence in his life and, and learns to love what God loves and hate what God hates. And God hates evil. And so the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. And it's uh, really the, the wise thing to do. Chapter 9, we've already looked at this, discussed it, but we'll read it again. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. And so really the smartest people on the planet, now they may not be able to do calculus and all these other things, but the smartest people on this planet are those that know their God and walk with him, that, that have the knowledge of the holy, that, that have a living relationship with a living God and see the world correctly because they see it through the eyes of God. Look at chapter 10 now and verse 27. The fear of the Lord prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. And part of that is connected to what we just read, that to fear, uh, fear the Lord is to hate evil and to turn your back on that. And one thing we know about sin is that sin is both expensive and very dangerous. And so we think of what uh, the book of James would tell us. Sin, when it's finished, brings forth death. And uh, many of us, perhaps, I, I know I would be one, that I believe if I had not got saved, when I got saved, I wonder if I would still be alive today because of the abuse that was given to the body in the pursuit of sin and pleasure, so-called. And so in the normal uh, way of things, what we would say is that somebody that lives a righteous life, um, they, they're not doing drugs, they're not spending fortune on, on alcohol and all that comes with it, uh, they're not out brawling and causing difficulties. And, uh, and so in a sense, their, their lifestyle by its very nature, is a healthier lifestyle. One who fears the Lord take cares of, will take care of their body because it's the temple of the Holy Spirit and will generally have a better quality of life, will live longer than the fellow who does not do such things because sin is expensive. Again, the, the, we know that there are exceptions. Uh, we're in a fallen world. Uh, cancer is no respecter of persons and all these kind of things. But generally speaking, uh, there is this sense in which uh, that holy living is healthy living and uh, does result in prolonging days, whereas uh, those uh, the years of the wicked shall be shortened. So now Proverbs 14, as we continue to consider this important topic of the fear of the Lord, 14 verse 26, in the fear of the Lord is strong confidence and his children shall have a place of refuge. And what a wonderful truth there is in this particular proverb. So somebody that walks in the fear of the Lord, they, they recognize who God is, they, they know he's great, they know he's powerful, and, and there's a confidence because our confidence for the future is not based on, on us, what we can do. Our future is based on our confidence in him. Uh, we recognize that he is our strength. He is our support. And he's our place of refuge. Uh, he's our protector. Uh, he's the one that cares for us. And so being committed to him, having confidence in his character and promises and the help that he provides is a wonderful way to be and a wonderful way to live. Chapter 14, verse 27, the fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. We've already talked about the snares of death. Uh, of course, not just physical death, but we've escaped from the snares of eternal death because the fear of the Lord has brought us to know Christ and has spared us from an eternal destiny in the lake of fire 
but also uh, the fountain of life. Uh, when we come to know the Lord Jesus, not only do we come to uh, know wisdom, uh, genuine wisdom and genuine knowledge, but coming to know him, he says, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And again, our life is not, uh, we don't need artificial stimulants uh, to, to give us a joyful life. We have joy unspeakable, full of glory because of our relationship with him. So the fear of the Lord is a fountain of life because, because instead of looking to the broken systems of the world, we find our satisfaction in the fountain of living waters. And that's where there is real joy that's where there is real uh, life. Proverbs 15, verse 16. Better is little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble therewith. And again, people are very wealthy and often very miserable if they do not have the fear of the Lord in their life. I remember reading that Hollywood, California, with all its, its glitzy wealth, there are more shrinks uh, in that place than anywhere else in the U.S. Because all this wealth and all this fame and all of this stuff uh, really doesn't produce uh, a life uh, that can satisfy. And so these people uh, are really desperately in need of help and counsel and all, but they're going to the wrong source. And uh, so they're, uh, they're really in a terrible condition. Better is a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure with trouble. Proverbs 16 and verse 6. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged, and the fear of the Lord, and by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. And so wonderful that we know our iniquity has been purged because of God's mercy mercy, and according to his truth. And that's a wonderful thing. But then as a result of that, because we've come into this relationship with the Lord, uh, we do de desire to depart from evil. We don't want to displease the one who has purged our iniquity. Uh, Jesus, who by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. We want to please him. And so in order to please him, we want to depart from iniquity and anything that would displease our Savior. And then chapter 19, Proverbs chapter 19, as we're continuing this wonderful journey, really, on this theme, the fear of the Lord tendeth to life, and he that hath it shall abide satisfied. He shall not be visited with evil. And again, this idea of satisfaction, having a sense of, of genuine satisfaction, uh, because of our relationship with Christ and uh, walking uh, with him uh, in awe of him in uh, that right relationship, the fear of the Lord. Uh, it really is a satisfying life. It tends to life. Uh, he that hath it shall abide satisfied to live that, that satisfied, fulfilled life and not be visited with evil because the Lord, again, is, is our uh, shield and our defender. He's our protector all of these things. Chapter 22 and verse 4. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Now again, I want to interpret this in the New Testament context. Now, because in the Old Testament, uh, in a sense that God's earthly people, um, there, there was a, uh, a kind of a promise that there will be blessings for those that were obedient to the word of God and there'd be curses on those that were disobedient. But for, for us in the New Testament, our blessings, and we already have them, we've been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, Ephesians 1 and verse 3. And we also have honor. We're saints, we're sons, we're heirs with God uh, and with Christ. Uh, we have riches, uh, uh, incredible riches, and we have life uh, more abundant. All of these things that we have uh, because of uh, our relationship with the Lord. By humility, the fear of the Lord, our riches and honor and life. Now, 
let me just say this, that, and again, I don't want to be to give the impression in any way that I am uh, supporting what we call the prosperity gospel or anything like that. But I would say this. One of the things you learn in Proverbs, that diligent work is rewarded in this life. So in other words, somebody who's lazy and uh, doesn't repair uh, his fences and uh, doesn't clean his stall and all this kind of stuff, well, he doesn't do very well in life. But the diligent, well, there's a prosperity that comes with hard work. And when somebody gets saved, um, of course, they now they're working for a new boss, right? The Lord is watching them. So there's a tendency to be a diligent worker, and that will be rewarded. Also, because he avoids evil and is not spending a fortune on sinful, vain pleasures. And so there's a sense in which uh, there is a prosperity that can come when somebody becomes a Christian. When I got saved, um, I was no longer drinking in large quantities like I was before. I wasn't smoking like I used to do. And uh, my expenses uh, went down considerably. Uh, and um, uh, I did well at work, got promotions and things like that because I started taking life seriously. And so there was a sense in which I, I was better off than I had ever been in my life because I got saved. And so, of course, uh, we realize there are exceptions to that. If you're in North Korea today uh, as a believer, you're probably not going to prosper because you're not part of the system. And so we recognize the exceptions, but we also want to acknowledge that in a general principle that there's great uh, honor and blessing uh, in walking in the fear of the Lord. Chapter 23, and we must uh, speed up here because our time's almost gone. Verse 17, let not thine heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. Don't get carried away with envy of sinners. Often they give the impression that they're living charmed lives. Remember Psalm 73, he, why do the wicked prosper? And he couldn't understand all, but then he said, God showed him their end. And so don't envy sinners, but you walk in the fear of the Lord and be consistent all the day long, continuous, ongoing state of mind, walking in the fear of the Lord. Chapter 24, verse 21, my son, fear thou the Lord and the king and meddle not with them that are given to change. Notice it talks about fear the Lord and the king. And I'm reminded of uh, 1 Peter 2, 17, where it says, fear God, honor the king. And we, we have to say that, um, and I find it a little bit disturbing, that a lot of Christians uh, find it very easy because they get caught up in politics. And of course, this is a very timely message. And as a result of that, they can very easily speak evil of people who are in authority. And uh, we're told very clearly in the word of God, that we're to honor the king. When Peter wrote it, Nero was the king and uh, certainly was not a very pleasant character. But we honor the person because of their office. Authority is given by God. And so uh, in one sense, I think what this verse is telling us, and, and very importantly, is this, uh, that it, somebody who truly fears the Lord is conscious of God's watching all the time and paying attention how do I respond to those in authority, even civil authorities, even authorities that are not necessarily good authorities? Uh, do I respond recognizing that the powers that be are ordained of God? Do I have respect for those in authority? Uh, do I show proper reverence for those in authority? And so that kind of brings us to a conclusion of our little journey here through the fear of the Lord in the book of Proverbs but just to summarize, just to kind of put it succinctly, we might say this, that fear of the Lord is connected with genuine knowledge and wisdom. You'll never really be wise without the fear of the Lord. It's connected with iniquity being purged and departing from evil, walking uprightly, if you like. It's a place of refuge to be found in God. It's a fountain of life. Uh, lots of very positive things that are said here. And of course, most of all, 
It's because we have come to fear the Lord, recognize who he is, recognize his greatness, uh, recognize his holiness, that has driven us to the place where we've put our trust in the Lord Jesus and in him. Wisdom personified are found all the tre treasures of wisdom and knowledge in him. And so what a wonderful thing it is to walk in the fear of the Lord. And I just want to put a plug in that on my YouTube channel, there are three other messages on the fear of the Lord. Uh, so, Because this is a big topic. So if you want to listen to uh, some more messages on this important topic, then I want to encourage you to look at Mike Atwood YouTube and you can see them. May the Lord bless and encourage you. Amen.